on. You will indeed. Now let's take a wee moment and we'll pray together. It's good to see Trevor and Alison and, Al and Ali back safe home again for Paris. We were concerned for them and you'll remember we were praying for them last week. Let's take a wee moment and we're going to thank the Lord now that they're home safe and sound and commend the wee ones who have just gone upstairs to the Lord in prayer. Our Heavenly Father, we do thank Thee for answered prayer for Alison and for Trevor and for the wee family. We thank You, Lord, for protecting them. We thank you, Lord, for sheltering them, them and for shielding them and for bringing them safely home amongst us again. And we do thank thee for that. And we commend those little ones who have gone upstairs that, Lord, you'll shelter them. And for the ones who look after them, Lord, for those ladies, we thank you for them who give up of their time. We pray that you'll bless that little fellowship upstairs now and protect them, we pray. And Lord, now as we turn to the sacred page, Lord, we would hear thy voice to our hearts, for we pray in our Saviour's name. Amen. And amen. Now, we're turning to the Old Testament this morning, and we're turning to the Old Testament book of the prophet Nahum. We're in Nahum this morning. If you go to the end of your Old Testament, you'll come to the book of Malachi, and you work back from Malachi, you come to another book called Zechariah, go back, you come to Haggai, and come back from there, you get Zephaniah, then again Habakkuk, and you come to this little book of the prophet Nahum. So we're in Nahum this morning. I've never preached from Nahum before. And in fact, I'm going to be preaching on him from him twice today. I'll be preaching from this little book uh, again this evening. But anyway, it's better to preach for I don't want to go to heaven and meet with these boys and say, did you never preach from my little book? Well, it, I'll, I'm going to preach twice from him today. All right, the book of Nahum. And we're in chapter 1 and we're reading at verse 1. The burden of Nineveh. Let me explain just the book of Nahum. Nahum is the book sequel to Jonah, the book of Jonah. You know the way you get these films, and there's a sequel onwards from the film. Well, the book of Nahum is a sequel to the book of Jonah, written about a hundred years after Jonah had preached in Nineveh. And so we come to Nahum, verse, chapter, chapter 1, verse 1, the burden of Nineveh, the book of the vision of Nahum, the Elkishite. God is jealous, and the Lord revengeth. The Lord revengeth and is furious. The Lord will take vengeance on his adversaries, and he reserveth wrath for his enemies. The Lord is slow to anger, and in great power, and will not at all acquit the wicked. The Lord hath his way in the whirlwind and in the storm, and the clouds are the dust of his feet. He rebuketh the sea and maketh it dry and drieth up all the rivers. Bashan languisheth and Carmel and the flower of Lebanon languisheth. The mountains quake at him and the hills melt. And the earth is burned at his presence, yea, the world and all that dwell therein. Who can stand before his indignation? And who can abide in the fierceness of his anger? His fury is poured out like fire, and the rocks are thrown down by him. The Lord is good, 
a stronghold in the day of trouble. And he knoweth them that trust in him. Amen. And we know that the Lord will bless to our hearts that reading of his own precious truth. When terrible times come, and mind you, we are living in terrible times. And when terrible times comes, friends, how many people, even some of the Lord's own redeemed people, find themselves questioning the goodness of God. Maybe there's a time in your life when you question the goodness of God. You remember a loved one taken from your home suddenly. You question the goodness of God. Maybe you've heard of someone recently diagnosed with an incurable disease and there's no hope for them. And maybe this very morning you're questioning the goodness of God. If God is good, friends, if God is good, why does God allow terrible things to happen? If God is good, why does God allow good people to suffer? Is it because God doesn't care anymore? When you see the atrocities that's going on in our world today, friends, and there seems to be no stopping it, is it because God no longer loves this world? And that's why these things are allowed to happen. If God is good, well then why? You know, you have every right to ask the question. But you have every right to get the answer. These terrible things that's happening in our world today, dear, tell me something. Do you believe it's God's fault? Do you believe this morning that any terrible thing that happens, that God is behind it? Why does terrible things happen in our world? Why do planes be blown out of the sky? The root of the problem, friends, for all this is going on in our world today, the root of the problem is away back in the book of Genesis. There's something God gave man. God gave man a free choice. And with that free choice, God gave man a warning. But man away back then, friends, chose not to obey God. Chose not to believe God. And away back in the Garden of Eden, friends, man disobeyed a net of the forbidden fruit. And that's why terrible things happen in our world. 
That's why we read in Romans chapter 5 and verse 12, As by one man sin entered the world. Let me tell you, friends, this morning, ISIS is not the world's worst enemy. Sin is. Muslims are not the worst, world's worst enemy. Sin is. As by one man sin entered the world, and death by sin. And death has passed upon all men, for all have sinned. And I believe with all my heart, if there ever was a day God really cared, it was this day. And if there ever was a time God really loved this world, it's the day in which we live. Let me tell you something this morning, child of God. God does care. God does love this world. And one fact remains the same. God is good. Do you doubt the goodness of God, dear? Do you doubt the goodness of God, brother? Let's remember what the Lord Jesus says. Never mind George McConnell. You listen to the Lord Jesus. In Matthew 19, verse 17, this is what the Lord Jesus said. There is none good. There is none good. There is none good but one. That is God. God is good, friends. God is good. Maybe you're here this morning and the troubles of this life are like dark clouds that hide His shining face from view. Maybe this morning life is tough and problems and pressures are your experience. And this morning you're finding it difficult to find the goodness of God. Let's remember what the Apostle Paul said. It was the goodness of God that leadeth you to repentance. The very fact that you're saved and the very fact that I'm saved and the very fact we're all saved here, those of us that are saved, you remember that's a living proof that God is good because it was the goodness of God that brought us to repentance. And this morning the Lord has a lovely text for us, a text through which He wants to really speak to these hearts. It's verse number 7, and I want you to really look at it now. Now, let's look at it together because this is the Word of God. Now, look at verse number 7. It says here, The Lord is good. I wonder, do you believe those words this morning? The Lord is good. Now, what else does that wee verse say? It says this, some lovely words, a stronghold in the day of trouble. Now, here's another precious truth. And he knoweth them that trust in him. Now, isn't that a lovely verse this morning to begin your week with? The Lord is good. Now, that's a precious thought. A stronghold in the day of trouble, that's another precious thought. And knoweth them that trust in Him, that's another precious thought. Do you know what you find 
And do you know what you possess and I possess in that one verse? We possess three things. You do. And so do I. We possess three things. First of all, in this verse, you and me and we possess a heavenly assurance. Now, what's the heavenly assurance that we possess? Here it is. The Lord is good. Now, that's not an earthly assurance. That's a heavenly assurance. And that's the assurance that God wants to give that troubled heart of yours. And that's the assurance that God wants to give that troubled mind of yours. The Lord is good. I want you to notice, first of all, the present tense of that text because it says the Lord is good. It doesn't say the Lord was good. And it doesn't say the Lord will be good when the days are brighter. No, no, the Lord is good. Whatever trouble and trial you're going through, whatever is pressing hard upon your heart at this moment, hold on to this heavenly assurance this morning that you have the Lord is good. Do you know that text this morning, that little phrase? It's for whatever, whatever realms of life that you're going through. Regardless to the realms of life, whether you're on the mountaintop or in the valley, whether your day is bright or whether your day is dark, the Lord is good. Maybe this morning, child of God, and mind you, every one of us face troubles and every one of us face trials and every one of us face awful times. But here's the heavenly assurance this morning that we have. The Lord is good. The Lord is good. Now, it's easy to quote that when life's good. And it's easy to quote that when God hears and answers prayer. It's good and it's easy to quote when the sky is blue above. Maybe it's not as easy to quote for you this morning, dear brother and sister, this morning, because, mind you, the sky for you is not blue. It seems perhaps maybe for some soul or some heart in this meeting this morning, God is silent to your prayers. And maybe this morning life for you is anything but good. But listen, will you take this home with you this morning? When life comes and it's dark and it's difficult, Listen, there'll be times, child of God, when you and I cannot trace God. And when you cannot trace God through your trials, and you cannot trace God through your troubles, ah, but you know, we can still trust Him, child of God. The Lord is good. When Corey Ten Boom was sitting at her sister's bedside, Betsy. Now, you wouldn't have called it a bed. It was an umpowl straw. Betsy was lying there, wasting away with starvation in a Nazi concentration camp. Corrie Ten Boom took her sister, Betsy, by the hand and says, Betsy, it seems God has forgotten us. Do you feel like that? As if God has forgotten me. 
that's he turned and looked up to Luke up to Cori and says, Cori, you remember now what Hebrews 6 and 10 says. Betsy, what does Hebrews 6 and 10 say? And with mind as clear as crystal, she says, the Lord is not unrighteous to forget. Oh, God hasn't forgot about us, Cor, I know. The Lord is good. She went on to say, For as the heaven is high above the earth, so, is, so great is his mercy toward them that fear him. In the midst of her darkness, in the midst of her pain, Betsy Ten Boom could say, the Lord is good. Alan Gardner was a missionary to Picton Island, the very southern tip of South America. He suffered many physical difficulties and hardships. Alan Gardner said, as long as the Lord blesses me with strength, I'll continue to serve him. After a while, there was no more letters come home. A search was made. And after a couple of weeks, they found his lifeless body. And a short distance from his body was his diary. As they opened the diary, they saw what Alan Gardner had entered. Fifty-seven years of age, he entered these words, I am overwhelmed by God's goodness. The Lord is good. That's the heavenly assurance that we have. But here's the heavenly assistance that we have. The Lord is good, a stronghold in the day of trouble. A stronghold in the day of trouble. as not lovely? It doesn't say this morning the Lord is good and is a stronghold that keeps us from trouble. It doesn't say that. Man that is born of a woman is but of a few years and full of trouble, and every one of us can say that's true. No, he says, but the Lord is a stronghold in the day of trouble. I want you to notice the something this morning. I want you to notice the strength of that assistance. A stronghold. God is the anchor this morning that keeps us steady. When the storms of life are raging, when the storm seems to overwhelm us, child of God, and the winds are blowing, and I can tell you it comes at times, and you think the waves are going to sink your wee boat, you listen this morning, the Lord is a stronghold. We have an anchor that keeps the soul steadfast and sure while the billows roll. He's a stronghold. And I'll tell you, child of God, he's that strong, nothing can move us. And that means he's that strong this morning, nothing should move us. 
You remember what the psalmist said, the name of the Lord is a strong tower, and the righteous run into it, and are safe. Oh, I'm telling you, child of God, the days of trouble, the Lord doesn't leave us on our own, you know. We have a heavenly assistance because the Lord is good, aye, but a stronghold in the day of trouble. Isn't that wonderful? The strength of assistance, but the season of his assistance in the day of trouble. I remember many years ago out on Granny Armstrong's farm, we played in the hay shade. And beside the hay shade, there was a hen house. And I'm afraid of hens. That's hard to believe, you know, I'm afraid of hens. If a hen or a rooster flew up onto that reading desk, I'd be out of this pulpit as quick as anything. That's true. I suffer from what they call feather phobia. And if a hen come up here and flap its wings, I'm out through that door like a bullet. But if one happened to fly up on a plate, <laughs> now that would be a, a different thing. It would disappear. But I remember this day out in Granny's farm. And in them days we had great summers. And during the summer months you would have got maybe an odd clap of thunder because in those, it's just the way with ever static and all was in the air. But I remember us as kids, we used to build huts in the hay It was great. And an old rope swinging from the beam we had that there, like swung like Tarzan from one pile of hay to the other. But on this day, there, all of a sudden, there was this mighty bang clap of thunder. And we run for the house. But as I run from the house, I heard a strange sound. It was this hen. And she was stunned with her wings up like this. I don't know. Now, she wasn't cackling, for I know the sound of a cackle. She cackles when she lays an egg. But did you know a hen has three, five different sounds she makes? Five sounds. Five different sounds. Not that I love her, but I know enough about her. But this strange sound, and the wings was up like this. And all of a sudden, these six or seven wee chicks come running from every road and got underneath her. And the call went out, and the chicks went in, and she got the wings down over them, and she wriggled her wee bum, and she got down, and you wouldn't have seen one. And I'll tell you, she was rock solid. She wasn't for moving. Do you see why there's lessons to be learned at the farmyard, you know? And I thought to myself that day, is nature a powerful thing? Man, she called out, and they ran out, and the wings were up, and they ran, and the wings come down, and she got on top of them. You wouldn't have seen one of them. Safe and warm. Well, you see, when the clap of thunder comes and trials come and troubles come, listen, child of God, we have a stronghold in the day of trouble. We have. What does the hymn writer say? Under his wings, I am safely abiding. Though the night deepens and the tempests or wild. Still I can trust them. That's a big thing, you know. Still I can trust them. I know he will keep me, for he has redeemed me. I am his child. Oh, thank God this morning. Listen, troubled soul, will you take this wee verse of Scripture home with you now? It's Psalm 91, verse 4. He will cover thee with his feather. He will cover thee with his feather, and under his wings shalt thou trust. The Lord is good. That's a heavenly, that's a heavenly assurance. A stronghold in the day of trouble, that's a heavenly assistance that we have. But look at the last wee line. 
It says there, He knoweth them that trust in Him. That's the heavenly acquaintance that we have. He knoweth them that trust in Him. You see to the Lord, to the Lord you're not just a number, you're a name. You might be a number in the workplace. You might be a number in the world. I'll tell you, you're more than a number when it comes to the Lord, child of God. You're a name. You're a name. He knoweth them that trust in Him. Oh, that's lovely, you know. What did the Lord Jesus say in John 10, 14? He says, I know my sheep, and I'm known of mine. He knows everyone. Someone used to always fascinate me at how my Uncle James knew the name of every cow in the buyer. Knew her name. That in there was bought, was bought at Clacher Mart. I bought that in there at Willie Armstrong. That ne'er was born in this farm. He went round every one of them. He could tell the names of every cow. When they were born, how they were bought, and where they were bought, and how much they were. You know, child of God, that's you and me in the eyes of the Lord. He knows all about us. He knows our names. I'll tell you, he knows our very head, because even the very hairs of our head are numbered. There's not a sparrow that doesn't fall to the ground that our Heavenly Father doesn't know about it. Are not we more precious than sparrows? John 10 and 3 verse says, He calleth his sheep by name. I remember preaching on that text somewhere there's not a sparrow that falleth to the ground that he knoweth not of. I said to the congregation that day, there's not a sparrow that dies that the Lord is not at his funeral. There's not one sparrow. The Lord is at the funeral of every sparrow. And I'll tell you how much more to the Lord we are precious than, than sparrows. Oh, child of God, this is the heavenly assurance that we have. The Lord is good. This is the heavenly assistance that we have. A stronghold in the day of trouble. Oh, but here's the heavenly acquaintance that we have. He knoweth them that trust in Him. Not lovely, isn't it? But you unsaved folk this morning, who have you got in the time of trouble? You have nobody and you have nothing. He doesn't know you by name. And do you see when the tide of death comes, you don't have an anchor. You don't have the Lord. You have no assurance. You have no assistance. You have no acquaintance. You have nothing. Because without the Lord, you have nothing. And without the Lord, you have nobody. Why don't you come this morning and join us in the family and in the fold of God. And be part of God's family. Be part of God's fold. And truly you will know that the Lord is faithful. You'll then know that His mercies are new every morning. Thank God for His faithfulness. 
thank God for his mercy. The Lord is good. The Lord is good. A strong hold in the day of trouble. And he knoweth them, not who are baptized, not who are upright. The Lord knoweth them that trust in him. That's it. That trust. Trust in Him. Let's pray. Let's bow our heads.